So let's talk about what you decided about these two sets, the set which is the interval from minus 1 to 1 closed on the left, but not the right, and the closed interval from 0 to infinity. The object was to show that each of these is not a compact set, not by using the closed and bounded criterion that everybody remembers from real analysis, but taking some time to wrestle with the bolzano weierstrass and heine borel properties. Uh, so first, first one that I wrote down anyway was for this set, u. How do we know? Whoops. Uh, stop. Stop. Too far. Too far. Um, for the set u, which is the closed interval from minus 1 to 1, why does it not satisfy the heine borel property? And so the group that worked on this said, well, why don't we try making an open cover where the right-hand endpoints of my open intervals limit on the number 1, which I guess I didn't write 1 there. Let me write 1. This is 1. This is negative 1 back here. So if the right-hand endpoints of my open intervals limit on positive 1, and then the left-hand endpoints of my intervals, I want to make those, let's make those limit on negative 1, um, which we did here by having them increase. So first question is, in this example, why did you choose your open intervals to extend past negative 1? Why did we have to do that where we didn't have to on the example we talked about together? So the thing to notice is that the definition, the heine borel property, requires that our set be a subset of the union. It doesn't have to equal the union. Um, and in our first example that we did today, where we started just with the open interval from 0 to 2, my open collection, if you union them together, actually equaled our set. But that doesn't always have to happen, right? To cover a set, we just need to have u, or whatever our set is, be a subset of the cover. And so the cover can include some points which don't belong to the original set. That's okay, as long as everything in the original set belongs to one or more members of the open cover. Um, so I think it's pretty clear why if we union all of these intervals together that our set U is a subset of that union. Every, every point in my red set here belongs to at least one of the purple intervals that are going to be above it. So why is it not the case that there is a finite subcover, that, that we can take only finitely many of these and they will cover my whole set? Where does that go wrong? It goes wrong near the right-hand endpoint over here. So if I stop at some finite collection of my u's, let's suppose that this is my finite collection, just the ones that I have drawn down here, um, then the union is going to include everything up to some point 1 minus 1 over n. Right? And there's going to be still some leftover elements in my set that I couldn't cover. So these elements don't belong to the finite union. So it's not possible for this open cover to extract a finite open subcover. And therefore, this set U does not satisfy the heine borel property. So, Let's, yeah. so why would you say, before we move to the next example, why would you say that the heine borel property failed? What is it about the set U that made the heine borel property fail? Why is this U not compact? What would you say down here? Yeah, it's that right-hand endpoint. It's this endpoint over here at 1. If this endpoint had been included in our set, then we wouldn't have been able to use this example, right? Because in order to build an open cover, we would have had to probably slop over the end like we did over here, and our argument wouldn't work anymore. So it's, it's something about this right-hand endpoint not being included, i.e., this not being a closed interval, right, that makes the heine borel property fail. Let's see what happens with our next set, V. So the set V is the closed interval from 0 to infinity. And the group that worked on the heine borel property for this one um, started their intervals uh, at negative 1 to 1. And the next interval is negative 1 half to 2, negative 1 third to 3. So the left-hand endpoints of my intervals are sort of marching inward towards 0. What are the right-hand endpoints of my intervals doing? 1, 2, 3. Yeah. So the right-hand endpoints of my open intervals are all marching out towards infinity. Um, how do we know that this is an open cover for V? Well, every element of V is going to eventually belong to one of these intervals, in fact, by the Archimedes axiom, right? because eventually, no matter what real number I choose, there's going to be a natural number that's bigger than it. Uh, and so it'll belong to one of these intervals. Um, but why is a finite open subcover not possible for this open cover? How do we know we can't just use finitely many of these to cover all of V? Yeah, it's not bounded. This set trickles out to infinity, right? 
Um, and so that means if we only take finitely many of them and union them together, it's going to have a finite right-hand endpoint. Right? And so it's going to miss all of the real numbers that are to the right of that on the number line. So no finite subcover is going to work from inside of this open cover. So in this example, what is it that you would say V is not compact mainly because it is not bounded? All right, so it's the boundedness here that caused us not to be able to extract a finite open subcover from this open cover. Um, so this, because it's the harder one to think about, this is the one I wanted to spend more time talking about. Let's loop back and talk Bolzano virus drafts for our uh, two examples. So the two examples you came up with for Bolzano virus drafts here were uh, starting, with, starting with our set here, 0 to infinity, taking the sequence Sn equals n, so the first term is 1, the second term is 2, the third term is 3, um, is supposed to be our counterexample. For our first set, minus 1 to 1, taking n over n plus 1 as our sequence uh, might be a way to do it. So to just visualize what those sequences look like, for this sequence, the first term is 1 half, then it's 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths, 5 sixths, and so on. So why doesn't that sequence satisfy the bolzano virus strauss property? Remember, the bolzano virus strauss property says that it needs to have a convergent subsequence whose limit is in my set. So what can we say about this sequence? Why does it not have a convergent subsequence whose limit is in the set? So this sequence was chosen so as to actually be a convergent sequence. Right? This sequence actually converges, and its limit is 1. So as n tends to infinity, uh, the limit of the sequence is equal to 1. And so it's convergent. So what do we know about the subsequences of a convergent sequence? If I take a subsequence from out of a convergent sequence, what do we know about it? They're going to converge. Yeah, yes, exactly. So all of the subsequences of this sequence are convergent, and they converge to that same limit. But why is that a problem? One's not, One's not an element of the set. Right. So it's not that this sequence doesn't have a convergent subsequence. In fact, it has a whole lot of them. Right. It's that the limits of those convergent subsequences are not elements of the set. And it's, again, this lack of closedness that's screwing us up. Right. We need not only for the convergent subsequence to converge, we need its limit to be a member of the set, and that wasn't the case here, because that endpoint at positive 1 is missing somehow. Uh, and in our last example, the subsequence that is just the enumeration of the natural numbers, why does that not meet the bolzano weierstrass property? What do we know about its subsequences? Yeah. Has no convergent subsequence. Now, how is it possible for a sequence not to have a convergent subsequence? Because it's not bounded. You're right. The only way that a sequence cannot have a convergent subsequence is if it's not bounded. That's the contrapositive of the Bolzano-Weierstrass theorem. 